Are you ready to I'm ready. act like an adult Yes, now? I am. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dallas Hoops FanCast, a podcast for Mavs fans. I'm your host, Sydney. I'm here with my co-host, Martin. Hey, guys. So today, we're going to do two things. We were just going to do a full episode um, responding to listener comments and questions from YouTube and Twitter. But uh, there was an interview that just finished with Dennis Smith Jr. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we're going to get into uh, the comments from YouTube and Twitter. Um, But first, the intro. Super important. You can follow the show on Twitter at Dallas Hoops Cast. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore Sydney Myers. And you can follow Martin in real life. Just <laughs> just find him and follow just him around. Find where I go. Uh, wherever don't, you're... What? Don't forget, we're also on Tinder. Okay, we're not on Tinder. <laughs> okay. We're on all the other ones. Yes, we're only on Twitter. And you know what? It's not important. Stop sidetracking me. Um, wherever you're listening, feel free to leave a rating or review. That helps the show grow like sunshine and bacon. Because bacon helps you grow. Um, I also wanted to say this is our second to last episode before training camp. And so I wanted to say thank you to everyone for listening. Um, I'm glad that we got to do this and share our thoughts with you guys. I think that when we got started, I don't know if we expected anyone to listen. And so it's kind of cool that we get to to share our opinions mm-hmm. and then hear others' opinions. Hopefully we're delivering um, the kind of podcast that you enjoy if so, you know, let us know. If not, tell us how we can change it. One thing I will say is don't judge us right now because like you, we've been waiting for things to happen <laughs> yeah. and we're not getting anything. Like I've been waiting for that that video of Porzingis in the gym yeah. running full court with Finney Smith and everybody yeah. else and looking awesome. It, it's never happened, you know, and, and nothing's happening. Yeah. So. Every week we're like, well, I guess we could talk about, <laughs> did they get a new haircut? Yeah. Or and then yeah. it just so happens that like the day before we record, something happens. Mm-hmm. And so we always have something to talk about. But um, yeah, I mean, that's why we called it a fan cast, because we just want it to be something that fans would in, enjoy listening to. So hopefully we're delivering that. Um if you want to leave a comment, you know, we're responding to comments and questions in this episode, but um, it, it'd be cool to do this more often. So if you want to leave a comment or send us questions, you can do that on Twitter. Um, we post every episode, at least when I get around to it on YouTube. Um, so feel free to do that. But anyways, enough of the intro. Let's get started. So uh, just finished up. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr. did an interview with Chris Hendo on YouTube. He didn't really talk about Dallas a whole lot, but I felt like we should talk about it because he did talk about Dallas a little bit. And I know people will probably want to hear about it. And maybe you don't want to watch the whole interview. It was about 30 minutes long. So I figured we would just kind of give the small details that he gave. Um, he, he only talked about Dallas like a couple of times. The first thing was Chris asked him about Um, his relationship with Luca. And I guess there was like rumors swirling that there was um, like problems between Dennis Smith Jr. and Luca. But Smith was like, you know, we're really good friends that there was never a problem there. I don't remember hearing rumors that they didn't get along. Like I don't remember thinking or or hearing that. Yeah, I think people generally understood that uh, their on-court presence or the relationship on the court wasn't working yeah. as well as we wanted it to. But I think everybody was on the same page when they felt that they were actually friends off the court. I never remember it coming out that they had beef together. Yeah. And I so never I, I never felt the need for Dennis to have to clarify because I wasn't confused on yeah. that. I thought they were friends, even with all those things that, that happened. So Yeah, but this is like the second time I've heard Smith clarify this. So I guess maybe somebody thought it but i yeah. never did the thing that that i just thought wasn't working was like you said on court and mm-hmm. and that wasn't i don't think that was imagined i think that was real just in terms of one their play style but also just actual things that we saw happen the infamous one is the final possessions of the Pel- possession uh, yeah. of the pelicans game everyone probably knows what i'm talking about where smith tried to take the game winning shot when the play appeared to be for luca i mean it was just stuff like that where to me, it looked like on the court, they just weren't there, making it work. There's another clip of actually when they played the Knicks, the Mavericks played the Knicks in New York. And uh, is this before Smith got traded? No, no, this is the, yeah, this is the night 
right oh, before oh, okay. he got traded. That, I see. So um, Luca passed it to Dennis Smith with like two seconds left, so he had to shoot it, and Smith mm-hmm. made a move but didn't get himself in a shooting situation, oh. gave it right back to Luca, oh, I remember and Luca that. just had to throw it up. And like, he made it. He made it, but the replay, when you see Luca running back. back the look on his face was disgust like dude well, why, why would irritated. you put me in yeah well that's an unspoken rule yeah you just don't do that and so i i don't know if that was a you know i guess that could be interpreted because i remember in that game he couldn't make a wide open three who luca mm. and this one last second just has to throw it up yeah. it swishes <laughs> and the look it could have been interpreted as he was upset with himself like oh yeah. i make that one yeah but it also could appear that he was frustrated with with Dennis Smith. So, yeah, yeah the, the on-the-court stuff, I think everybody was on the same page, but I think we were also on the same page with the off-the-court stuff. Yeah, I never thought there was a problem. But, you know, if you did think that, apparently there were no issues. So then he was asked about it again. Um, Chris asked him, you know, there was rumors that Dennis Smith, like, quit on the team. Mm-hmm. And I think that comes from people talking about how he just didn't show up to work Um, there was the day that he called out sick, but then he was seen later on at a restaurant and Smith talked about that. He said, well, first of all, he said he never quit on the team. Of course. Um, he said that he never gets sick his whole life, but he was actually really sick with the flu during that time. And I mean, I'm inclined to believe him. I don't want to like call him a liar. I just, I still have a problem with how he didn't show up, but he was seen out and about yeah and seemed okay and I, I remember it wasn't just one day that he didn't show up like he just didn't show up it to was shoot for around. an extended period of yeah. time he didn't show he wasn't even playing in any games and that time when he called out sick you know if you're so sick where you can't play a basketball game that you get paid millions of dollars to do i feel like you should be too sick to go out to a restaurant and go out to eat. It's just my personal opinion. Although Spiral Diner does have really good pancakes. <laughs> yes. I will say that. <laughs> They're a great restaurant. Yeah. But the point being is... It, it just know, didn't look good. Yeah, it didn't. So yeah. I'm not going to say he was sick or not. It's just it's hard for me to wrap my head around that. What happened? You're out at a restaurant. Yeah. And again, it wasn't just one day. He missed multiple practices and games. Yeah. He just didn't go because he didn't like... How things were going. Yeah, I remember that time because it was like he just wasn't showing up and they would ask Carlisle about it and it was like no one really knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the other weird part of it where it's like if you were really sick, I I don't feel like there would be this whole mystery of like, where is Dennis? Mm -hmm. Why is he not here? You know? Yeah. Another thing I thought about is the only reason he came back is they couldn't trade him. His trade stock was falling yeah. because of he him not bad. Yeah, yeah. And so they pleaded with him to come back to the public, but really behind the scenes, they told him like, "Look, we're going to trade <laughs> you, but you got to come back because you're killing your trade stock." Yeah. Yeah, and so I you know, again, we talked before we started recording, like I don't want to just trash the guy because when you get right down to it, there's a lot of things I don't know, but there's also a lot of things that don't add up. And that's why I have like a a really uneasy feeling about it that's why i just didn't like the way it went because there was things that just didn't add up yeah and um the the I, next uh, sorry yeah, say, i think it's time to uh and after this conversation about it let's move on from dennis smith he was only a maverick for a year and a half yeah it's not like he was here for seven years and we <laughs> traded him or whatever it's time to move on from him i don't want to waste any more of our you know podcast it talking a about a guy podcast, that, you're right. that doesn't play here yeah anymore. exactly do you want to talk about the last thing where so there was rumors that um smith asked for a trade chris who was interviewing said that he did he never ask, asked yeah. for a trade however in smith's response i didn't hear explicitly i didn't hear him like explicitly deny it he kind of just said like there were things going on behind the scenes that he couldn't talk mm-hmm. about things with the higher ups so Again, like, I don't even know if I have a problem with him asking for a trade because it clearly wasn't working. And I think we said this at the time that Rick Carlisle can be hard to deal with. It wasn't so much that. It was just the way he handled it. Mm -hmm. I think we agreed with him on a lot of levels, but I didn't like the way he handled it. Uh, Agree. Anyways, so I just wanted to share those notes in case you um, didn't want to watch the whole interview or you kind of just wanted to get the sound bites of what Smith said about the Mavericks. 
there you go. That's kind of the summary, but you can watch the full video on YouTube. It's not up yet, but I assume it will be eventually because his previous interview with Durant is up. So you can go search for it there. Um, but now we're going to get to our original topic, what, which was answering listener comments from YouTube and Twitter and um, just responding to some of the comments that we've gotten through through some of the episodes. So I'm going to start with comments from YouTube and then we'll go into questions from All right. Twitter. Let's do it. I'm going to skip the one about Odom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled it up and you know what? Yeah. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So um, this one, okay, this is whatever we were predicting the Mavericks record when we said that they could win 50 plus games. This person, MM, said, if we win 41, I'll be happy. Now, there's two sides to this. If you win 41, that means you're below 500, which is kind of a disappointing No, you're, you're right at four, 500. You oh, yeah. 41 yeah, and 41. you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Math. Okay. <laughs> um, but it would be kind of a nice tribute to Dirk. Yeah, I think Dirk <laughs> would rather have 51 <laughs> wins. Like, True. I don't think 41 yeah. would make him happy. Um, and likewise with me, I'd rather win 50 games and 41 yeah. just as a tribute to Dirk. I think if they... If they end up winning forty one, you know, uh, it'd be. But I don't want them to. Yeah, well, I don't want them to shoot for forty one. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, this is from. It doesn't matter. I'll just read the comment because <laughs> I can't. Okay, it's from Jacob Price. If the Mavs need talented players for cheap, they should give Michael Beasley a minimum contract. People hate, but the dude can ball. Would you take Michael Beasley for I a minimum contract? I would rather contract? have Carmelo Anthony for the minimum over Michael Beasley with all due respect to Beasley. Yeah. But it, I'm come on guys. <laughs> like if Carmelo's available and it's between Beasley and Carmelo and you just have to sign a guy. If you like, it's like the lesser of two. Yes. Labels. Yeah. You, you got to take Carmelo. I yeah. mean, but, come but on. you're assuming it's between like, we're if just it's saying just between them up, two. Yes. But yeah. just straight up, you wouldn't take Michael Beasley. No. Yeah, I yeah, wouldn't sign up. No. I think Michael Beasley. No can, disrespect. He He's... can get hot and have some good games, but I don't like. There's no pool there for me. There's yeah. no allure of wanting Michael Beasley. Yeah, okay. and it, it has nothing to do with him as a player. I just, I'm, I think we're perfectly fine with that. Yeah. Well, this was during the time during free agency. Okay. So yeah. They were nah. Kind of I, I would have been very disappointed if one of our marquee signings was Michael was Beasley. Michael Beasley. <laughs> Okay, um, around the same time from free agency, um, what's this name? Max Maximet Harden, hopefully I pronounced that right. I really believe they're preparing for the 2021 free agency for Giannis. And this is kind of like the unspoken thing right now is that the Mavs are I hope shooting not. for Giannis. Yeah. I hope not. Can, have we, can we learn from our lessons yeah. of the past? Like. We're not getting the big name free agent. Giannis is not coming to Dallas. Especially Giannis. Yeah, it's just, it's not going to happen. Okay, yeah. Let, let's be happy with Luca and Porzingis and build around them. Let's not shoot for Giannis on Tetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetet
is what I have a problem with. Yeah, so. I think, like you said, you know, and we talked about this when they got Porzingis and the whole thing with Davis was going on. It's like, yeah. man, if you're Anthony Davis, you've been there for like seven years, and who's the best player that the Pelicans have gotten? Cousins, and it was a terrible decision yeah, because it was not a good fit. fit. Yeah. yeah, and and then then they let him go anyway. Yeah, um, it was dumb. Whereas with Luca, his first his rookie season, they trade for Porzingis, and it's yep. like, man, that like that's all he wanted. Yeah, and so it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, like I I kind of agreed with Davis. I just didn't like the way he handled mm-hmm. it. Well, if you it, and not to get on the Anthony Davis situation, but if you sign a contract, yeah, honor the contract. Yeah, you know. Anyways, so I I don't think that's going to happen with the Mavericks or Luca because I I think that the Mavericks are a better run organization. I think Donnie Nelson's a better GM than anybody the Pelicans have ever had. <laughs> um, so I, I, like I think David we'll be Griffin, safe. Though. Yeah, well, he's good now. Yeah, but, but he just got there. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, this comment is from John Davis. Uh, it's right around free agency time. He said. I really hope that Dallas does not overpay a mid-level player like Wesley Matthews and Harrison Barnes. And you know what? For all of the disappointments, that that was a comment, this is my response, for all of the disappointments of free agency, I got to give them props. They didn't do that. And they they have done that in the past. They've overpaid for a mediocre yeah. guy. And it, it could be because now they actually have good players. Yeah. And back then they, they don't it was have like, to try to what sell does it tickets? matter? Yeah. yeah, what does it matter? So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad we didn't get stuck with, with anybody. Just, I, yeah, I can't think name of any, the guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, like, uh, Dwight Powell, they got a very team friendly deal. I think that's 11 million a year. Is um, he worth 11 million though? Like, <laughs> well, you know, we'll talk about yeah. it. Um, DeLon Wright, you know, they're not really paying him a whole lot. So Seth is nothing. Yeah. yeah. So I think they did a good job. Like for all the things I was disappointed about, I am glad that they exercised some, some self-control. Mm-hmm. And didn't overpay. Like, Wesley Matthews got a max contract. Now, granted, it wasn't a max like, you know, what a Kevin Durant would get. But it was it was his max. Yeah, and, and, you know, Wes Matthews was a good player, I, I thought, at one <laughs> point. Um, if you, so, Yeah. But he still wasn't worth a max. No, even at no, his best. No. Okay. This comment is uh, when we were making the... Trying to predict how many games the Mavs would win. This is from Daniel Ramalan. That's a cool last name, Ramalan. Okay, your face. I will be happy if they stay healthy and can build team chemistry for the next five years. If they make the playoffs next year, great. If not, no big deal. See, I think that's a positive attitude. That's a long-term view, though. Five, five years. years. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, say, Luca could be gone by then. <laughs> I would say two to three. Yeah, I, I, I would. If they don't make the playoffs next year, they definitely got to make it the year after. Yeah. Um, mainly because you want to keep Luca. You got to yeah. start winning. Um, but what about this year? Would you be okay with them not making the playoffs? I mean, I'd have to be. Yeah. You know, I I guess it depends on how, if they win forty eight games and they got bumped out of the last yeah. game of the season. Okay, it's understandable. But you know, if they went thirty two and fifty, like I would be really that would disappointed. Be yeah. yeah, I think like so. Obviously, I want to make the playoffs every year. So I don't know if it's even about that. It's more just about I want them to be better and improve, and I want them to win. At least forty games. They're, you know? they're they're going to the playoffs this year. Okay, you heard it here first. All right, let's move on. Um, this is from R- Roberto Canella Fina. I'm pretty sure I nailed that one. <laughs> okay. Of all the ones, I'm pretty sure I got that one. Okay. He said, trade Powell for something before people notice he sucks. He is a poor man's DeAndre Jordan. So here's what I'm going to say about Dwight Powell, and then you can share your okay. thoughts. Um, seen a lot of workout pictures and obviously that's all I need. You know, this is the whole picture right here, but seriously, like he does look like he's continuing to work on his game and Carlisle likes him. He's got a great attitude. I'm willing to give him another shot this season, like clean slate, forget all the disappointments from the previous years, how his shooting has been up and down, maybe not the best rebounder and so on. I want to see what he does this year. I'm willing to give him another chance and say, like, all right, Dwight Powell, show me what you got. Yeah. Uh, of all the players that Carlisle loves, hates, whatever, <laughs> I, I never imagined his love affair of Dwight Powell would be so high. But I think it's because of Dwight's efficiency. Yeah. Dwight Powell was second in the league in efficiency and scoring around the basket. Um, 
And so, like, that says a lot, especially when you have a, a playmaker like Luca that can get him the ball in positions. And he was really good even the year before that, before they had Luca. So the one thing he's really good at is finishing around the basket. Yeah. The pick and roll. Yes, yeah. the pick and roll. Lob and, threat. Yes, and and he's second in the league at that. I think first was Rudy Gobert or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, so I guess, yeah, that, you know. But I, I see some some interesting comments from people. They they see Maxie as the starter instead of Dwight. Hmm. I, I can't imagine Dwight not being the starter. Yeah. The starter at center. Porzingis is at the, the five. The, I mean, the uh, at the four on yeah. offense, the five on defense. Yeah, I am... Um... Like you said, he's really good around the basket as like, yeah, the the lob finishing, threat, the pick uh, and the, roll, yeah. Finishing, yeah. Um, and even like when he when he sticks to that as his role, and when the when coaching you know sticks to that as his role, he's really good. The problems come when he you know tries he goes out to the three point line. So he's yes, not a great shooter. True, but the second half of the season he was a forty percent three point shooter. Yeah. So After it's like, oh, break. okay. Yeah. He was averaging I, like know. 20 points a game yeah. or something. So I don't so. really know what to think of Dwight Powell. Yeah. What I do believe is that he's going to be the starting center. And that's why I'm willing to give him another chance. Because we have no choice. <laughs> well, just because I'm like, okay, to finish the season, he did pretty well. He's working on his game. He's got good chemistry with Luca too. Yeah. Him we'll and Luca connected a lot. Okay, this comment, uh, again from YouTube, is from Hakura Orihara. Ohir- I know hey, that, that one's one getting embarrassing okay. and it's insulting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hakura. I'll just do the first name. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll be positive. The Mavs can make the playoffs if, and there are six ifs. Kristaps doesn't get injured. Boban Marjanovic becomes an unstoppable big man in the paint <laughs> defensively and offensively. Seth Curry plays at the top of his career, shooting threes out of nowhere, playing like the next Jason Terry or Peja Stojakovic. Luca does his thing. Carlisle uses his best judgment and skills as a coach to get the best out of his players, which is every year. Yeah. Mavs bench players outplay the other team's bench players. We've seen this last season. At one point last year, the Mavs bench was playing really good. They were even described as one of the b- best benches in the league. So basically, their bench would have to be awesome. So health, Marjanovic becomes Shaq. Seth Curry becomes Peja. Luca is MVP. Carlisle wins coach of the year. And the Mavs bench is awesome. And if that happens, they can They're make the be playoffs. They're going to be good. Yep. I, I agree. <laughs> agree 100% I mean, on all those. So I think I said this the other day. Like, I think that a lot of things would have to go right in order for the Mavs to be good or like, really good. Like any team. Yeah. But I don't think the things are, like, outlandish. It's not like, you know, for the Nets to win the championship, Kevin Durant would have to be healthy. Well, that's just not going to happen, you know. Whereas with the Mavs, it's like... Yeah, Porzingis would have to be healthy, and Curry would have to maintain his career shooting percentage, and Luca would have to stay the same or get better. Like, none of these things are outrageous, but yeah, they, they would all have to go right for the Mavs to be good. But I think it's possible. Agree. I don't really have any thoughts on that one, other than I don't think we need Marjanovic to be... Yeah, I don't know about you know, that one. Like, yeah. I, I don't really know if he's going to play much, except I, yeah. when Porzingis is resting, but... I think he basically replaces Mejri, and yeah, you exactly. know how much yeah. Mejri played, so... Which I wonder, like, why didn't they just be, bring back Mejri? Maybe Marjanovic the is... The Mej. Yeah, he, I don't know. Okay, uh, this is a question from Twitter. It's from at LD77fan... Um, I think I'd guess this last time. That probably means Luka Doncic, wow. 77 fan. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, question. Which Mavs player will have his minutes per game decreased compared to last season? Well, my first pick, and I know Mavs fans are going to be like, what? <laughs> is what? Dorian Finney-Smith. Oh, yeah. And the reason I say that is because that already happened last year at the end of the season. <laughs> yeah. Justin Jackson stole his minutes. Yeah. Dorian Finney-Smith is a nice player, but he's not a quality starter on a winning team. Yeah. And I know like in, in these off-season videos of him in the gym playing against <laughs> With Luke non-NBA and- players, and he's it's like... You got to understand, every one of these guys in the NBA, when they were in high school, they were the man. They were the dog. They they were killing it. They were doing all the behind the backs, fadeaway threes, killing everybody. 
And then the NBA, they're like, oh, I can't really do that. So when he's playing pickup games, yeah, he looks really good because, you know, that's what he was like in high school. And compared to an average Joe like myself, yeah. he would destroy me. So I, that's my pick. Sorry, I know that's a long story, but Dorian no, Finney-Smith mean, is my pick. It makes sense. Like you said, we've heard um, projections where, like, Finney-Smith is the starter. And yeah, it's like, well, no. we already saw that movie last year. Like, Justin Jackson took the starting role. So, I mean, I, Mainly because Justin Jackson's shooting ability yeah. had nothing to do with defense. I know Finney-Smith is a good defender. He can be a good yes, defender. Yes, but his shooting is what's important. Yeah, and he, he doesn't do a a whole lot outside of that. So no. his shooting yeah. is suspect. And and I didn't see like consistent lockdown. It's not like he was to Tony where, Allen out yeah. there, you know, shutting down Kobe Bryant. Yeah, I think, you know, the way I said it at one point is like, he doesn't hurt you, but there's never a time where it's like, man, I'm glad he's out there. Or like, man, I, mean, I wish Finney Smith was out there. I, I do like his his attitude sometimes. Yeah, he goes he's, out there and he does his yes. job. I love having him on the team. Yeah. And I, I do believe he's going to play, but I don't think he's going to be a starter. Well, and I think, like, ideally, if they're contending for the playoffs or a championship, Finney Smith and Justin Jackson aren't even part of the rotation. I think, well, so I don't know about that. Like, okay. uh, you know contending maybe but i think they can For be playoffs. contributors on a good team yeah but in the right spots i think finney smith can contribute on a winning team and i think justin jackson can as well i just don't think that they're starters and yeah. if, if they're starting then you have a hole in that position because yeah. i think their skill set and what they provide is better suited as a role player off the bench a very good contributor like a Deshaun ja uh, Stevenson. Yeah. Or Deshaun Stevenson. Is that right? Sean S yeah, Deshaun Stevenson. Yeah. You know, something like that. Yeah. Well said. Very <laughs> passive aggressive. I was trying to, to give I'm him respect. I'm rubbing up on you. <laughs> okay, next question. This is from at Mavs Highlights, who has a really great podcast. Um, follow him on Twitter and also subscribe to the podcast. But his question is, who are the Mavs top two rebounders this season and how many are they grabbing per game? Martin, I'll let you go first. I think the leading rebounder is going to be Luca. Oh, um, not Porzingis. No, I think it's going to be Luca. I think uh, after the All Star break, I think he was after they traded uh, DeAndre rebounder. Um, <laughs> after they traded DeAndre, I think Luca was. I'd have to look at uh, Dwight Powell, but I think Luca was the leading rebounder. Hmm. He averaged like nine rebounds a game. Yeah. So I think Luca is going to be the leading rebounder, the leading point guy, and the leading assist guy on the team. Wow. Yep. Second, I think, will be... Porzingis. Or Dwight Powell. I don't know if Porzingis is going to be a super strong rebounder you know, in this first year. Because I think his minutes are going to be yeah. very curtailed. I think he's going to be at like 30 minutes a game max. So that's one thing. Um, so I, I like, uh, for everyone listening, I've been doing research All on... All two of you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have... <laughs> okay, I've been doing research on um, players before that tore their ACL and what they did before and after. And one thing I noticed that went down was rebounding, mm -hmm. which kind of makes sense. You know, they're just not as... Um, just that season they come back. It's scary they, to... Sorry to, to cut no, you no, no, off, yeah. but... To be aggressive when you're surrounded by a bunch of guys and your yeah. lower level of your body is exposed. exposed. Yeah. yeah. And so I think there's a little bit of fear of that. Yeah. And I think mainly just because of his minutes. True. Uh, and he was never really a strong rebounder, uh, even when he was completely mm -hmm. healthy. So, so you think it's going to be Luca and Dwight. Luca and Dwight Powell. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was inclined to say Porzingis. I'm going to say Luca and Porzingis just because. Okay. I don't have to agree with you on everything. Okay, this is from at Brent Edmondson one. Um, oh, oh, this is an interesting question. I like this one. Which Mavericks would you trade, and in what decade? So, for example, he said I would trade Michael Finley for Rolando Blackman. So basically, if you can take any Maverick player out of that decade and implant them into another decade. What, which one would you pick? What would oh, you trade him for? I would trade Dorian Finney-Smith from Mark Aguirre, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. You know what? And bring in him, and then I would That's trade a a, a, um, anybody, Seth Curry for Prime <laughs> Dirk, you know, bring so, him in. So, like, yeah. right now? Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, 
with yeah. Prime you know Dirk and Porzingis with those are all Mar- so this is just building your all Mavericks team, yeah. you know. But let let's say that you could only do like for this team, it doesn't have to be this. Well, year. I'd want Prime Dirk. Yeah, because Prime Dirk with Porzingis and Luca. Yeah, I mean we may not stop anybody on defense, <laughs> but we're gonna score 180 points. A game. You're yeah. not gonna stop us. Stop us on offense, like. The only reason you would the Mavericks would miss a shot is because they just happen to miss. There's nothing yeah. you're going to do defensively. True. Okay, so I would say, um, what was the year the Mavs took the Lakers? Was that 88? 88, yeah. Something so like that, 86. I would take Prime Dirk, which means that he's still there in 2011 to win the ring. But I would take Prime Dirk and put him on the 88 team so that they could win a championship that year. Well, they didn't need him. Um, well, they just, they just didn't need to Derek Harper. The ball, yes, the clock out. <laughs> they would have won that series. But that was just the conference. I mean, you know, yeah, I don't know who came out of the East that year. But probably, probably Boston. the Knicks or something. No, not the Knicks. The Celtics, maybe. Oh, okay. That was always the Celtics and Lakers in, oh, the, okay. in the finals. But that was before my time. Yeah. So yeah, it's a weird question, but at the same time, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking Prime Dirk anytime, anywhere. On, but on this team would be cool. Oh, yeah. To see him play yeah. with Porzingis. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, this is... Oh, this is another question from Brent Edmondson, and it's really good, so I wanted to include both of them. Okay. Could a Maverick coach win in a different decade with a different team? So, like, I don't know if I read that right, but here's his example. Could Rick Carlisle help the 87-88 Mavericks beat the 87 88 lakers the only thing i can say and sorry Derek harper but i can't imagine a point guard that plays for rick carlisle <laughs> dribbling the clock out. dribbling the ball out <laughs> on such an important possession i just can't see a rick carlisle yeah. point guard doing that and if he did i promise you he would have been traded <laughs> that off season so so my question is and i guess i should have watched that play why didn't they call a timeout when they realized what he did? They, you know, it was before you know the world actually mattered. So <laughs> what? I don't know if anybody knows. Yeah, that. I mean, I'd have to watch it, but yeah, interesting question. Like, if you took a, let's say you took another, like, say you took Don Nelson. Do you think they would have won in two thousand eleven with Don Nelson? It's possible. I mean, Don Nelson was a great coach. Yeah. Um. And really, it was Dirk that, and, and Rick Carlisle did some really good jobs, you know, with his decision making. But I think Don Nelson's a really good decision maker, also. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to say, yeah. I would say yes because I would say first of all, Dirk. Second of all, Don Nelson is an, is an excellent coach, and also their defense that year. And so you would still have Dwayne Casey as yeah. a defensive coach. And so yeah, I think they would still win. Here's another way, another question. Um, what if Rick Carlisle was coaching the 06 Mavericks? Would they have won that? Yes. No, I, I do believe that okay. because Avery Johnson was always, he his biggest strength was motivation. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't so much X's and O's. Not that he was a bad X's and O's guy, but mm-hmm. he was like, he was going to make you feel like you can he conquer was the anything. Coach. Yes. He was the leader of the team. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think they would have won in 06. I think Carlisle would have been able to to kind of calm everything down. And Mm -hmm. you know what? Uh, Well, another thing though, that, cause I was going to bring up the Portland series where they lost that 24 point lead in game four. Yeah. And, uh, but a lot of that stabilization came from kid as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you had Devin Harris, a young Devin Harris and and Jason Terry, but I want to believe that, and then also you had the refs. Yeah. So you I know what? Say, I mean, it maybe was not rigged. because you know Would, Dwayne Wade shot thirty nine free throws a game. So. Which, by the way, I made a video about that um, whole series. If you search on YouTube, just like 06 finals rigged or were the two thousand six finals rigged, you can watch it. And I point out just it's so clear. It's not even mm-hmm. a question. Um, Unless but, you're a Heat fan. Yeah. Yeah. You just salty Mavericks <laughs> fans. <laughs> well, it's like I think the top comment for that video was you're only saying this because you're a Mavericks fan or whatever. And I was like, after watching this entire video, if the only thing you have, if the only shot you have to take is that I'm a Mavs fan, then I think I've won. Okay. It it was clear. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would like to say like with Carlisle, they probably would have a better chance, but again, 
would they have even let the Mavs win? I don't know. It's It depends on how you feel about that series, but I thought that was a good question. Okay, so that was the last question. Thank you to everyone who um, sent us questions on Twitter. For everyone that comments on YouTube, we read all of those comments, obviously. So keep leaving those comments. Let us know what you think about any particular topic that we discuss. And if you send us more uh, questions in the comments that you leave on YouTube, we'll do another episode like this in the future. Um, it's actually kind of fun. I like I like the interaction. That's one thing about with a podcast is that it's just us talking. It's hard to interact with listeners. And so I like posting the episodes on YouTube because I, I can kind of like see what you guys think about it. So it's fun. Um, but thank you guys for listening. Again, uh, follow the show on Twitter at Dallas Hoopscast. Follow me on Twitter at underscore Sydney Myers. Follow Martin on uh tinder <laughs> <laughs> i am not on tinder do not go looking for me i do not exist on well there. they don't know your last i'm name, happily married so i don't need to be on <laughs> tinder um but that's all for us thank you guys for listening we'll see you in the next episode bye <laughs> i think this is your favorite part of the episode i think this is the only reason why you like it. doing these so you can just not say bye uh.